Hi, Mark Savage here, and welcome to my channel. A really short moped information update video for everybody who's got a moped. Yes, this is a ZZR 1400 petrol tank. And this is what made me think, actually, I'll do a quick video. Let me put this down because it's freaking heavy. If you're going to do a service on the big bike, remember to drain the fuel out. Uh, this has got to cut the gallons. It's quite heavy. Don't do that. Uh, oh. Right, <clears throat> I've been asked so many times over the last six odd weeks now the same questions and I'm getting five questions a day um, stored a moped up um, left it and not used it for a while and it won't start what is it some of you are watching my older videos and the information's there you know clean the carburetor change the plug check your air filter etc etc but this is more than likely not your problem E10 fuel. Now I've got a load of videos on there. At the end of this one, there will be the problem with the Speed Fight 3. It says um, breaking down. I sold a very nice Speed Fight 50cc. The guy used it, filled up with E10 a little bit, then filled up more with E10, and he broke down on the way home. It was that quick. I came here, drained all the E10 out, put E5 back in it, good as gold. So a lot of people who ask me questions now haven't watched this E10 fuel, didn't even know it happened. But last year, they stopped making ordinary unleaded. Now this E5, E10 bit, I don't even knew what it was on the pumps, it was just unleaded, super, diesel, job done. Then they started putting these numbers on, and so I didn't know what it was either. It meant the amount of ethanol they put in the fuel. Ethanol's not good, really, really not good for mopeds, okay? A lot of cars can't use it, 1995 upwards for cars, but to be honest with you, even modern cars don't like E10 fuel. It's got 10% ethanol in it. They don't like it. I've just done a little poll. People are finding it a lot less miles to the gallon. Really are, and some cars are harder to start. Now for a moped, it can be catastrophic. It can, they can't even say the word how bad it is. It's really bad. And I'll tell you why. The ethanol attracts water. It makes all your gaskets go hard. It can destroy all the little workings. And with 2T, the fuel then sits in there. And then the water separates, because that's what happens and then it destroys an awful lot of components in your bike. There are some videos out that it came out at the same time I released my video about the E10 fuel. They said, um, all you've got to do is go to the garage, get five gallons, put some food colouring in it, mix some water in it, drain out, hey, done, and then add some more. I mean, who could do that, honestly? A ped, how are you going to do it? You cannot build a container, a plastic container, and fill it up with a petrol station. It has to be a proper fuel one, the red cans or the red plastic ones, they're built that way, or the big 25 litre ones. Garage don't even like to let you do that most of the time, but how are you going to get back on the ped? You can't ride holding it, very fucking dangerous, so don't do it. You can't fill your bike up V10 then drain it back out because you just put it in your bike as well. So, great idea for people who have called Nigel and want to go to the garage, no disrespect, go to the garage with their two Cans, you can't fill up two cans by the way. One can, bring it home, filter it all through. Occasional riders of their nice end field or whatever they may ride. It can be done. You've got E10 fuel fighters. That's £10 a bottle. £10 a bottle on the massive price we're paying now. So some of you might remember the media caused this fuel crisis. Do you remember that? Nicely done, wasn't it? There was the old E5, the new E10, the Super E5, all trying to get in there. And the media decided to say, oh, there's a rush on a fuel petrol station. Oh, it's a glow. And all of a sudden, everybody rushed to the fuel stations. They drained out all the old E5s so they could put the nice E10 back in there. Well done, media. They really should have been told off for that. They caused an awful lot of panic and an awful lot of madness out there. But all the tanks now are full of this beautiful E10 crap and your E5 Super. And there's some guy, you still aren't doing E5. If you're caught short and you've got to use it, then you have to use it. Put as many as you can to get home before you put some E5 um, Super in there. What does it do? This is the whole point of the video. What does it do? Imagine this is on your bike. These are your fuel lines. You get two. One goes to fuel, the other gets the air in and cools the vacuum. They go really, really hard. And you wonder, what's the difference? Well, they don't cause a vacuum anymore. So when you start your bike, the fuel doesn't suck through, your carburetor float doesn't fill up the petrol, and this is why it's not starting. But the damage is more so than just these little pipes going hard. Because you replace these, cut for three quid, not a problem. On your carburetor, here's your float, fuel in, air in, etc., oil, fuel, fuel, oil. You've got little components in here. That ethanol just reacts against them straight away. Also, you're getting water in there because your tanks aren't sealed units. They suck in air. The only way you're going to get fuel out, obviously, which wouldn't come out. 
So you're sucking in air, which is attracted by the ethanol in the fuel, and then you're getting water coming in here as well. So you've got water and the ethanol damaging all the little parts in here, your little float, everything else, so it's damaged, and I mean damaged, beyond repair sometimes. You could if you could just quickly clean it off and spray them up, which I did with the speed fight, but a lot of people now, guess what you've done? You've left this petrol in your tank. Now, it swells plastic tanks for a start. It damages the fuel filters, it damages the fuel lines, it damages the carburetor, the reeds as you go further in, and now you've put water and ethanol around your piston. You begin your small ends. This is, you should never have water in your engine, and you've got water in your engine now. So, when you're pulling your bike air after six weeks, three months, with all this crap petrol in there, and you've looked at my, some of my videos, and you're going, I know, I'll watch this video, I'll drain air. Some of you just aren't even doing that. Just, Mark, I want your email, I want your social media, uh, can you come out and fix a bike? No, I can't do any of them, I'm sorry, but you could have knackered your moped, literally, just killed it. You're gonna go garage, they're gonna love you hundreds of pounds. You know they replaced the car, they fuel lines, they may even place the piston and everything else. You are looking at a big wad of cash. Now, adding to this, your 2T oil. People ask me, Mark, what the best one to use? You know, you've got your Putilin, you've got your top brand makes, you've got synthetics. Make sure it's E10 compatible, because a lot of them aren't. It doesn't mix with it. When you pour this in your petrol and shake it around, it all goes red, green, whatever colour it is. This doesn't, with the E10. It sits there, you're getting full natural E10 through your bike, or you're just getting big blobs of oil come through, because it's not mixing, and it's causing damage as well. So not only have you ruined your workings of it as well but now you can start getting scoring your you know your little ped 30 50 mile an hour you can get out of it with no oil which is the worst thing you can do so you're damaging your piston rings and scoring your engine as well your piston and everything else so this is why when you bring it to a garage it's loads of money so make sure you read these it says e10 compatible ask the garage some don't even know your health of stuff isn't a lot of these aren't either so real real minefield for you once you start using E10, so check them. How could have you stopped it? Simply not use E10, but you may have been, because you didn't know it happened, so I'm not going to blame you there. Secondly, you should have got home and drained all of the fuel out of your bike. Took the air off, start your bike up, run it till it stalls, and then get that crappy petrol out of your tank. That may have saved it. Okay, that may have saved it, but a lot of you are going to find now, you've got knackered bikes, great way of making you buy new, isn't it? Get rid of all the old peds off the road. Um, this is why I've not been buying peds either. You know, I used to get the old bits, worked fine, now doesn't, don't know what's wrong with it. Well, I do. It's crap petrol. That's what it is. And I can't blame you, because a lot of you are pulled up and not even noticed that you're using this crap petrol. They're going to, I think it's five years now, they're going to actually let out E20. God knows how cars are going to run on that. So, really quick video. Please stop asking me the same questions, watch my videos. At the end of this video, there'll be a link to the E10 fuel breakdown, and I'll do the ordinary carburetor clean ones as well, and I'll pop them on there. But for moped users, 125s, even mopeds, stuff like that, um, and older bikes, this is gonna be your problem. Why your wonderful bike that ran perfectly six weeks, one month ago, three months ago, the longer this stuff's in your tank, the worse it is. And it separates, and when you're trying to start it, the fuel raise, the water lowers, and you're sucking straight away water into the carburetor, into your engine, really bad. I can't stress how bad it is. There you go. I'm still waiting for all the parts to come for this. And I had to put E10, in this to get me home, six liters. This is a 2010 model, it will run on it. Idiot. So I'm gonna be getting back to this video, and if you watched my last video, I had to fill up with E10 crap fuel. I had to, there was nothing else I could do. I had a gallon in there, I put one gallon in. So I know it mixed with the good old super that was in here, so I wasn't too worried about it, and I've got two gallons of fuel. That's not brilliant, you know? I'm gonna drain it out of there, because if this is stored up for any amount of time, and I'm going to use it if I have to on a bike, I'm going for a long journey, just get rid of it. Both my bikes are tiger and this will run on E10, but I just don't like using it. People are so much noticing how bad it is. Let me get back on with this. You take care of yourselves on the road. Sorry it's been a rant, but I can't say any more to you guys that are asking the same questions five times a day to me now, that what is it? And that's what I'm trying to tell you. The crap fuel. 
if you haven't been using the crap fuel and you're 100% sure, you are 100% sure you've not used it, then follow my other videos of how to clean the carburetor, put a new plug in, clean the air filter out, and then suck the, end, the, the petrol through. Easy start if you have to, get it running. But otherwise, use these 10, there you go. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. There is hundreds of moped videos out there. If you need them, bigger bike ones as well. Bye-bye. Oh, I actually forgot. Something big as well. I actually forgot. <laughs> Just over now, being drunk. Where is it? I'm getting back to my ZZR video. A lot of you want me to see this one. No. So I'm still waiting for my parts for this baby. So then. Some of you may remember a little while ago that there was the fuel media rush. There was no problems with the fuel, but the media wanted to get all of the fuel out of the tanks. That's what I think it really was. It was a nice little ploy. Dog's going to knock over my stand. I love you, Millie, but you're going to knock over the stand. Don't do it. If your camera wobbles, you're, you're stuck, aren't you? Beep, beep, reverse up. Beep, reverse. We have to do this beeping noise, reversing. Reverse up. There you go. It wasn't that difficult. Let me open the door. The autograph. <coughs> and here's something I forgot to mention also. Your 2T oil. Now let's not forget. And you're just getting normal fuel through. Which is bad because it's not mixing. So you need to make sure that... Start again. Now we've not even mentioned about your 2T. I'll just mention it. Now, let's not forget 2T oil. A lot of you ask me, what's the best one to use? Putilin, you've got loads of posh ones out there. I normally say, just go to Halfords, you know, your average ones. Don't use your car plan ones, they are crap. But these aren't ethanol compatible, E10 compatible. <laughs> so you're using your oil, good quality oil, it's not compatible with E10. So what it's doing, it's not mixing with it. What you're going to get is this coming all through, which is your bike won't start, or it's sitting in the bottom of the tank and it's not mixing.